asked me to talk about the scale of human consciousness again because I refer to it quite a few times in my videos. And um, it's a logarithmic scale. It runs from 1 to 1,000. 1 is the consciousness of an amoeba, a one-celled organism that you might find in a mud puddle. And 1,000 is the consciousness of, let's say, Buddha. So, uh, you can map everyone's consciousness, every person's consciousness on this scale. Uh, you can also map animals onto the scale. Uh, generally speaking, people's consciousness, um, will fluctuate during the day, depending on, like, I suppose the situations, unless you're in higher states of consciousness where you can hold your vibration. Uh, everything under 200 on the scale is a negativity. And um, 540 on the scale is unconditional love. And that is uh, where you should... Uh, well, you should aim for higher states, yes. But you should be able to achieve 540 on the scale in this one human lifetime. So... Uh, that's the basics of that. If you want more information, there's, uh, well, I used to refer to Dr. David R. Hawkins' books, which are still available, uh, but there's lots of, um, websites that have taken his work and, um, put it on there. Are they 100% accurate? Uh, I'll try a few of them out, and if they all look like they're the same, then, you know, maybe go with it. Uh, but you can also go on Amazon. And look for Dr. David R. Hawkins and then uh, get select the, the Kindle version of the book. And then you can download a free sample. And uh, that way you could get free samples from a bunch of his books from uh, that source. The caveat is... Um, what's the caveat? Uh, is it 100% truthful? Uh, assume it is. I mean, you're going to have to find somebody to be an authority on this. Why? Well, because uh, if you calibrate under 200 on the scale of consciousness, it's the only way out. I just, like, so maybe there's other ways. You could pray to God. You could pray to God. How do you pray to God? Um, the best way to pray to God in my um, way of doing things is um, just to go into silent meditation rather than using words. Because if there is a God, uh, it knows who you are, and it knows what you're up to. So if you are really wanting to reach God, then uh, God will know. Uh, if God doesn't speak back to you, what does it mean? It means you, um, I don't know what it means, but does that? Ha I think it happens for a lot of people, that they don't get messages back that they see. But keep looking for signs from, rather than it being a human-formed God, uh, consider it to be, because um, it's very limiting if you're expecting, you know, like the, the voice of the Simpsons God to talk to you when you're talking to the Spirit. So I always look out with my eyes and my ears for signs from the Spirit. So, um, I'm really getting off topic, but what signs, uh, uh, maybe birds, bird, uh, songbirds, or, you know, um, you see an animal that you haven't seen for a long time, you look up the symbology of that, uh, look at, um, uh, synchronicities, in other words, coincidences, um, pay attention to what people are saying, maybe there's some messages that people are saying that, they're like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Music on the radio, when you turn on the radio in your car, uh, all these kind of things. But anyway, I want to get back to the scale of human consciousness. Now, I saw a new one today, a new thing, and it's this one. I'm sorry if there's reflections. And I haven't seen this one before. I don't know how clear that's going to come out, but it says at the bottom here, on the bottom, it says uh, the ego down in orange, and then in the yellow and lime green, it's called linear mind. 
then it gets into spiritual reality, and then it gets into enlightened states. And at the bottom here, it says, um, down here, things are done to me. In the orange area, things are done to me. And then in the next one up, it says, things are done by me. Then it says, things are done through me. And at the top, it says, things are done as me. So it's really this top section, things are done as me, that I want to talk about because it's the most confusing. It was even confusing for me. I think I'm starting to get it. No, I still don't get it. I think you have to be in enlightened states in order to really understand uh, when it says things are done as me. So I, I can't give you a good answer. <coughs> I was going to say, <clears throat> well, I don't know. I don't want to say it because it, sound, it, it's, it, it doesn't sound right to me. I was going to, I'm not going to say it. <clears throat> they want me to say, things are done as me, so it makes me sound like I'm the doer. And I always say in my lectures that if you're a really good meditator, you recognize that you are awareness, and everything that is going on around you, that you're aware of, um, you're not doing it. You're aware of it. So if you're in an enlightened state, if this is even correct, this chart is correct, um, perhaps it seems like you are doing it. Is this what science of mind calls co-creating? Uh, I don't have any more insights in it. I'm not an enlightened being, I suppose, so I can't really explain what it's like in enlightened states to see things are done as me. But it does remind me of Joel S. Goldsmith, who I talk about not so much as Dr. Hawkins, but he was a healer back in you know, the 1950s. And um, this was a group of people... There was more than one who were talking about as. And they were saying basically, well, in those days they were more religious than we are today. So they would say, God appears to me as pretty much everything. Pretty much everything here is, um, let's go with spirit. Everything is spirit, which means uh, even though it appears to be... Um, you know, a tree or a pavement on a road or a car or a human or a cat. That's because we are um, seeing those things. But from the spiritual perspective, all of it is spirit. In other words, everything is God. And then someone says, well, what about Adolf Hitler and the Nazis or Pol Pot and the Cambodians that... Um, murdered everybody. Were they God too? The answer is, they are not God. Is it God appearing as a Nazi? No. What that is, is a human who is in search of power. And they're using um, low vibrational things. They're low vibrational humans. And they are doing what they're doing because of their ego. What about animals? What about a, like a rattlesnake? Uh, ego is um, a characteristic of most animals. There are, you know, like a dog's wagging tail has a very high vibration. The whole dog, it said the dog's wagging tail. Does it mean a dog's wagging tail is more intelligent than, you know, a scientist? No. But what it means is the vibration of love of the dog's wagging tail is actually higher than a lot of scientists, vibrationally. But we would say, you know, because we use, for our judges of intelligence, like Mensa tests and um, there's other ones, but... IQ tests. Those are kind of intelligence tests that we use on humans. 
well, I don't know how you're ever going to get a dog to do those kind of tests. But it's a, you know, it's a, that's a human scale. And we're talking more about spiritual realities than, you know, human intelligence realities, which are definitely real. They're just, you know, another item. But in the end, uh, if we go to look at spiritual reality, which is the kind of green on the bottom and light blue on the top, spiritual reality. I hope this is not mirrored. If it's mirrored, then I'm, you know, I'm going to watch it. Oh, it's my, I'm so low tech. I'm so low rent. Uh, we'll see if it's mirrored. Hopefully it wasn't. But uh, in spiritual reality, it says things are done through me. This one I can do. Because it's, you know, I always say when I'm doing my videos, it's like, I'm not doing, like, writing all the script of the words that I'm going to be talking about. It just comes ad lib. And, you know, don't congratulate me for it because I'm not doing it. You know, I don't know what the words are going to be. So I always attribute it to the muse because it's, like, not me. So what's the muse? It's just a creative aspect of... I don't even know. It's just creative aspect and it comes and it creates all the stuff and I talk and, you know, so, you know, I don't know what I'm going to say most of the time. And sometimes I really surprise myself by what I say. Anyway, so things are done through me because the muse comes through me, through my voice box to make words and stories. So that one I understand. And that one is labeled as spiritual reality. So, um, if you were going to go and rank me on this chart, um, I would say that I am running with spiritual reality the way I see it. Because things are done through me, and my me is uh, the human body. So it's not actually correct for me, is it? Because I always say... Um, oh, maybe I'm... This is... It's so confusing because I keep saying, well, what... What is riding around inside of here is pure awareness, watching the body and watching, you know, the mouth make words and things. So I guess it's true. I guess things are done through me works if you believe you are the body. If you believe you are the body mind, you haven't understood what I've been talking about, about just simply being the awareness then you're at spiritual reality, which is, you know, green on the bottom, blue on the top. When things are done through me because you believe that, you know, you are this body and it's, you know, the words are coming through you, through you. So, and as far as enlightened states, things are done as me. This doesn't work for me at all because the awareness is not doing anything. Everything is being done by what is not the awareness. Let's go back to the rest of this one. Okay, at the bottom, ego, things are done to me. What does that mean? From an egoic perspective, things are done to me. Well, what does an ego think? The ego definitely believes it's the body. And what is being done to it? Um, uh, whether, mm, whether people are nice to me or not. Um, uh, it's kind of implying that the ego is not doing anything. Everything is being done to me. So what does the ego do? They're being done to me. Because the next, the next one up here is linear mind. So that's yellow on the bottom, green on the top. Second from the bottom, linear mind. And if you get up to that level of consciousness, you are saying things are done by me. So that might be like the capitalist, the CEO of a capitalist company, a big corporation. Uh, I was hired to 
cut out the dead wood and uh, get this company back to profitability. Who is doing it? Me. I am linear mind, and that's what I'm doing today. So it's all about me, 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 which is all about ego, 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 ego. And, you know, these CEOs are atheists, so they don't believe there's any spiritual reality whatsoever. Um, how am I doing it? Well, I've got a marvelous physical brain in here, and the physical brain um, uh, basically is uh, what's created my mind, and my mind is really smart, and that's how I'm going to turn around this company. So uh, there's definitely a denial of spiritual reality among these people, these people, um, well, they might be good at running corporations, but uh, they really haven't done too much research into spiritual realities. Whose fault is that? Um, well, would they take it as being, you know, I am I just haven't read that, I'm not interested in that, or, you know, I've been dissuaded from believing in this. But, you know, if I can turn the company around then it must be me, and it must be me that's decided uh, not to look into spiritual realities. That would be a smart person who admits that they've got some failings. And a lot of those uh, corporate bigwigs have been through trainings where they're kind of shown that um, there's like 360 degree feedback, and, um, you know, I do have some shortcomings. So being self-aware... Uh, I don't know what else to tell you about this at this point uh, because I'm already at 16 minutes. But um, I'm just going to shut up and close off here. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and uh, tune in tomorrow for more videos.